Hello everyone, we are Tom and Alfonso, and today we bring you our project Run That CID. So we're gonna paint a pretty utopian world because we started wondering what if we didn't need file system or operating systems to work in a daily basis? What if all of our devices could see the same things? So the same data, the same applications without having to store anything um, in your local devices? What if data and code were self-describing and lived in the network? Uh, what if all you needed to make this happen was an IPFS node and a universal runtime. So say hello to IPFS compute where everything is a CID. Um, in our project, you'll see that code is a CID, the data is a CID, IPFS is just a file system and we have a common runtime where we can do computation over the data that lives in the network. So the code lives in the network and the data lives in the network. Um, in the end, we added a computation over IPFS and we'll see in a moment a few demos in which uh, we can see the bandwidth savings of um, having this computation near the data through this model. And also we've seen that this opens the possibility or, of even having a programming language over IPFS to run anything and uh, over data and code that lives in the IPFS network. Okay, so from the point of view of somebody that wants to do some compute on some data that's stored in IPFS, we've got a way of defining functions just normally in Python. We can serialize things and send them to IPFS and, and get their SIDs, including interestingly functions. We have a reduce function, which takes partial results from the map and combines them to get a total result. And then we have a fr an execution framework that will uh, execute it for us. So now we're finding all of the blocks that are going to be processed with the map phase. Then the map phase runs. Then shortly after the reduce phase will run as well. This is actually sequential, but there's an opportunity for parallelism in the map phase at least, potentially in the reduce phase too if your operation commutes. But now we're coming to the end of the reduce phase and we should see an answer in a moment. Yeah, found a bunch of words and counted them. So a critique of serverless systems as they exist now is that we've kind of forgotten the lesson of systems like Hadoop where we brought the compute to the data and we're doing a lot of data shipping. So one way around that is to do what the folks at Joint did with Manta, the sort of S3-like object system, and actually allow you to run compute on the same machines that the data's already sitting in. Um, so we, we've got an opportunity to do that with IPFS. Uh, we're starting to see it in AWS even now where you can actually do partial gets of, of S3 objects based on some SQL-like query. So we've got query proximate to the data rather than uh, general compute for now, but I'd be surprised if they weren't actually planning to do compute adjacent to the data at some point. So the way I actually serialize functions before is a little bit problematic, it requires the target to know a lot about the runtime, etc., the modules that are loaded. We could go the sort of Docker route again, um, and FastD looks a good way to do it. We want a lightweight way of doing functions as a service adjacent to our IPFS nodes. But the real answer is probably going to be what Alfonso is talking about in a second. I'm going to show you now how we embedded uh, WebAssembly runtime in an IPFS light node and how we do computation with code uh, that lives in the network and data that lives in the network. So I started two of these nodes. And what I'm going to do first is to deploy, we have here a, a WebAssembly program that it's a map reduce word count. It has the map function and the, and the reduce functions to count words uh, in a distributed manner. So we're going to deploy these um, this application to the network. Then we can see the, the, we came up with an interface in order for, to be able to use any kind of code. We came up with an interface that exposes the address of the code, uh, that the bytecode of the function that we want to execute, the functions that it exposes and what, it, what type it specs as, a, as an input. And we're going to go now to the other node and we're going to add like the two first verses of Led Zeppelin's immigrant song and we're gonna count those words. So right now, what it happened here is that we added these the data for these two verses, and we're gonna use this data to perform, like to call this map over the, so here is the address of the, of the function, and we're saying that we want to use the map function over the CID that is the first verse. So we do this for the first verse, we do this for the second verse, we can even get the CID to see the result 
that is actually in the network. We see that we've, we've um, counted the number of words of the second verse, and we can now call the reduce, giving us an argument to this computation, the first and the second CIDs uh, after this partial map uh, computation, and we do the reduce. Let's do it. And we see that uh, we got, what we did here is to get the partial results from the previous two computation of map. And now we got like, we did the reduce over this data and we have like, we counted all of the words. It, wor it works with large data sets, but for the um, purposes of demo, I showed it to you like, I showed it to you in this way. And now we also, because we came up with the idea of, we could even have a programming language for, for IPFS. And we have here an interpreter, and what we're gonna do here is running like the same script that we run like interactively. We could have some kind of interpreter that reads these um, these comments and takes the CIDs as part of the data and the code and uses as a pointer to execute the, the get the code and execute the computation over the CID. And that's it. 